What's up guys, it's Joel Punchers PayPal. Today we got Doug behind the camera and so, we are doing a special video for you guys. We are answering the question that we get asked a lot, which is does tank output pressure matter when it comes to your paintball marker? So if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Make sure that you guys do that, please. And uh, we'll see you guys after the intro. Okay, so I think this one stemmed from a while ago. I had one of my students from OSU come into the shop. He was looking for a new reg for his tank because I told him, yeah, your upper, your upper pressure's really high and it's one of those ones that was like locked, couldn't change it. And when he got his new one, I was like, yeah, just make sure you, you check your velocity, it's gonna be different. And Joel's like, no, it's not, that doesn't affect it. And I was like, really? <laughs> Let's go outside and prove that right now. And we did, and guess who was right? Doug was right. So I'm sure there's other people that also like aren't aware of that or you know think it's some like flat earth like theory type shit. Oh, it's fake. We're gonna show you that it's not. So Joel, let's take yeah. it away. And a few things to mention here real quick, guys, is uh, there are definitely markers out there that output pressure definitely affects things. So before we even get into this, uh, basically today we're just going to show you that there's, you know, like is there a velocity difference or is there not a velocity difference? But there are markers out there that you have to be very careful. They require a, a, a lower output pressure just to function properly. Older MacDev guns, older Bob Long guns, um, the Planet Eclipse CS1 marker of guns. Yes, I remember that one. Output, otherwise your regulator will squeak. Didn't the Egos used to like higher output pressures, like the yeah, old yeah, Egos? And the, yeah, and, and to your point, Doug, there, there's also other tanks out there that, or other guns out there that require or like having a higher output pressure. Tipman as well. So, yeah. Um, so we've got a shocker amp here. This is Doug's personal marker. It's my whip, baby. And then we've got my flashy Planet Eclipse CS3, and we are going to put two different tanks on it. We've got... Uh, an SLP regulator on mine. Doug's got a Pro V2 with all the shims out on his. We've also got an HK Army uh, Aerolite 6845. And that'll be a high output, right? That should be a high output. So we've got a range of varieties here. We've got some items um, here to help test us scientifically that we left in our magic box over here. What's that? Oh, oh no, you got them. You're hiding them. already have them. Oh, already. yeah. Yep, so output pressure tester, uh, chronograph, and obviously Allen keys to, to change the velocity difference. So. All right. Uh, Here, so I say CS3 the. CS3 or amp? Uh, let, let's do CS3. So what I'll say is, give it like five shots with the with the velocity. We'll yep. take the tank off. We'll show people the output pressure. Then do an output pressure of a different tank. Put it on the gun and see if the velocity is any different. Agreed. Um, so we've got uh, Defy Reliant paint here. We just got this in, guys. Check out another video on that. Um, but this Reliant paint is, seems to shoot really well. I've been liking every good. Defy batch we've gotten. Yep. Shout out to Todd Boyer, KC All-Stars, uh, KC Sports Complex for sending us this paint. So far, so good. Um, all right, so we've got the SLP here. Uh, this is my personal marker. It should be chronoed to that 280, 290 range. It is a SLP, which means the output pressure should be 300 PSI. 300, right. And there goes the silica pack right into my hopper. <laughs> All right, just so trying to keep it fresh. It. Yeah, right. Seriously. Okay, we'll set that to the side. That's my snack for later. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. So this is this is the the ever important so piece is, that we got to yep, film. So this is the SLP. Two fifty six, two sixty four, two sixty what? Two sixty flat. Okay. Two seventy one, and two seventy. All right, that's five. To something again. Okay, so now we're gonna degas it. We're gonna degas it. We're gonna pre pressure we, test that bad boy. We're not gonna boy. change the paint. We're keeping the paint. Change, the yeah, barrel, keep the, the paint, the barrel, same. everything the same. Not gonna I mess did. with velocity screws. I'm not bore sizing this, guys, because theoretically it shouldn't matter. Right. right? The, the, the variance will be the same from tank to tank. Correct. Even if it's even if we're underboard or overboard, my tank should probably just do that. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is my SLP that I've got on mine. All right, there you go. Right on the money at 300. Oh, I'm sorry, trying to get it to focus, sir. Oh, what? Okay, so that translates to 300, right between the two and the yeah. four? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Cool, cool. So right at 300 for the SLP reg on my 90. And then which one are you gonna grab? Are you gonna grab mine or are you yeah. gonna grab the blue one? Uh, no, I think I'm gonna just go straight from 300 to 800. Okay. And then we can use your gun to do another test yeah some validation from, uh... okay you were safe and turned the gun off ah. does it feel like it's kicking a little harder 
Um, maybe a little bit. It looks like it is just yeah, a little maybe bit. Maybe a little bit. So your highest was 270 with the last one. Highest was 270. 292. 287. 292. Give me two more. 292 again. And 284. Yeah. So. Without a doubt, about theoretically about 20 FPS difference. Yeah. I mean, we could average those out. I'm not going to. You <laughs> You're the there. one that's good at math, bro. Don't make me do math. Average it, you can, yeah. <laughs> I won't ask Doug to do that. Don't. I know it won't happen. Don't. <laughs> Nope, math not good right, for guys, me. So that was the difference between a 300 PS. Oh well, I 300 guess I output. And then we'll we'll try it with my with my daddy. Well, we should probably show everybody that. This oh is yes, actually and actually prove the output. 100. Yeah. So there you go, 800 on the money. Oh, focus, focus, focus. That helps a lot, actually. Yeah, right there. It's directly on eight. Okay. So directly on eight, guys. So, you know, 500 PSI, that's that's a lot. That's significant. Um, and it really only changed the FPS by 20 FPS. Now the question becomes, does that matter? You know, um, obviously like efficiency wise and all that stuff, I guess we could test it. I feel like I've heard tech friends of mine say a couple things. One is that you can get deeper into your tank with lower output pressure. And two is that it's like less harsh on your internal O-rings and stuff. Correct. If so with, like, that's, with lower that's pressure. the general argument, Doug, is that like it's less, uh, it's more, it's less strain on your marker. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, my batteries are low, so just give it a second when you turn the loader on. I've seen um, I've seen a lot of people use a higher output with no problems. All right, guys. So this is a six eight seven insert. I've got the six eight eight on mine. We're still using the same paint. Um, this is Doug Shocker, and this is with his regulator. This was as of and as of four days ago, it chronoed at two eighty two ninety over at the field. Okay, so this is with the shocker amp, 283, 279, 274, so 270s to 280s, right? Yep. And then, um, why don't we do the same thing? Yep, do that output guys. pressure. Okay, so let's check, Jesus. Oh, he's a little stuck. I never take my tank off, that's probably why. <laughs> oh, did I break the test? <laughs> you might have broke the test. I can't remember the last time I took the tank off my gun. I never break my gun down. This is how you get, watch that video from Kiki. There you oh, go. There it is. <laughs> watch that video from Kiki, guys, on how to... Get your tank unstuck. <laughs> or just find the biggest Wait. guy at your field. Wait. Yep. Find the biggest guy at your field. Have them go, take care of it for you. Go to him nicely and ask him. Only problem is I'm that guy at the field most of the time. What am I at, 400? Uh, you're 500. at about 600. That's with all the shims out too. You've seen me take those shims out. Well, yeah, I mean, 450 would be perfect. Yeah. Um, but 550 would be with one shim in it. So it's not exact, but it's close. So that's at 600. Um, so let's do, do we th do 300 or 800? Do the 800. Do the 800? I wanna, see, I wanna see the difference between like mid pressure to like extreme high pressure. Okay, so this is from about 600 PSI output. It's gonna cycle, yep. <laughs> <laughs> get my gun fixed. Doug's, Doug's stuff is, uh, <laughs> stay tuned for that video. That's coming <laughs> later. All right. Uh, so this is 800 PSI. Yep. 304, 298, 298 again, 314, and 306. So once again, plus about 20 or 30. Okay, now what's going to be really interesting to me. Put an SLP on that thing. Now, Doug, how long have you had this gun? I bought it, I got it October of 2021. It is currently so July of 2023. Like, say if you just use the SLP the entire time, right? Mm -hmm. To the tech standpoints, like, I wonder if you'd still be having this issue where like you're- Where it's your, cycling? Your gun is doing funky stuff. Here, wait, so ready? Let's let's clear this real quick. So what you might see, guys, is when Joel turns on the air, no, it didn't do it this time. See? But we, we did it like four times in a row back at the shop and my gun stopped doing that. I think True, it's only when I it's the first time. The, the lower output might be a reason why. Okay, so this is, so where were we at? Pro V2 at mm -hmm. 600 PSI output was about the 280s. Yep. The high output on the HK was at- Over 300. 300. And then this is my SLP 90. At 300. Ooh, that's, that feels a lot smoother, yeah. but it's probably because it's- 242, 244, 242 again, 237, 254. Yeah, so it's- 
Oof. I would say there's it definitely. It feels smoother, but that's because. Because you're not even getting your shots across now, the field. So another question that I get asked is like, does SLP, like I just had somebody that bought a, a, a CS3 and mm -hmm. he was asking, can you use SLP on any of these guns? The answer is yes. 100%. Yeah, totally. Like, I shoot 15 balls a second with my CS3, no issues. Um, so I think the big thing is, is it's going to affect your velocity, whether or not it affects your efficiency. That's a question that we should probably answer with another test, but you can definitely tell it affects your velocity. And I think the bigger question is like, does it affect your internals? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, optimally, like everybody should be running, I always recommend 300 to 500 PSI. Yeah. Because any electronic marker nowadays is going to cycle at that just fine. You're not gonna have no issues. Older guns, obviously you gotta be careful. Um, but you know, 300, 500, whatever the case may be, like the new Ninja Pro V3, the Powerhouse TKL, they're all set at like that optimal pr range, output pressure range, which is about that four to 500. Um, if you have like older school Ninja reg, take the shims out of it, you'll be fine. Um, but you know, that was kind of interesting with this. Let's see if we can get, let's see if Doug's gun was just randomly firing with a higher output pressure. And Doug's definitely used this quite a bit. Let's see if, yeah, see, that's what the SLP and it's not doing anymore. So I think that kind of like, Doug, this might have been the perfect test to, to do with your marker actually, is to show with the SLP, it's the gun's still gonna cycle, but you know, right. um, your internal seals and all that stuff. But we're talking over the long period of, of, of use. Two years actually. of me not changing a single Correct. ring. And I see people use these like higher output because they're cheaper, mm -hmm. right? Like the HK Aerolites, uh, some of the, the infamous tanks and all that stuff. I'd recommend for the price point, it, you know, for the most part, you're not going to have issues, guys. Um, over the period of a couple years, yeah, you might have to rebuild the bolt and, and the regulator. But, you know, is it worth the extra money? I think that, like, if you can afford it, yes. If you can't afford it and you can only get, like, a, you know, a high output pressure reg that's standard. Um, Shouldn't be the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Keep some in mind is that the standard regulators are not adjustable. So they're at 800 PSI only. You can't adjust them. Whereas like the Ninja regs and the powerhouse regs, you can't adjust. So that's also something that I guess we should point out in this video. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's true, Doug. It does, <laughs> it does affect things. And yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that because that was like a year was, and a half, two years ago when that, that was happened. a while ago, man. That it was, was a long time ago, ago. but uh, it's definitely you know, it's gonna affect your velocity, which in turn probably affect everything inside as well. So there's, there's your answer, guys. So thanks for doing science with us today. If you guys like this video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click like, do all that good stuff. Use the link in the description to buy any paintball stuff that you might need from Punishers, and uh, we'll catch you at MSXL this weekend. Yep, see you guys.